All right, we have some prayer requests today. Oma has a cold. Alan's brother Bill ha is having heart. Billy is having heart issues, so pray for them. Also, please pray for Dave, who is in the hospital with an infection. Um, and I think those are all the concerns we have. Are there any other concerns today, Janet? Continued prayers for Bert. Any other concerns? Yes. Sharon? Sharon, Dennis Crouch's sister, has just discovered she has cancer, so we need to keep her in our prayers um, as she goes through that time. Also, continued prayers for our villa. Yes. Um, prayers for Penny, as she is not feeling well today. Yes. Prayer for Peg and Carl. Peg and Carl are traveling. All right. Any other concerns, Rita? You said Mick. Mick had an appendix burst. So we need to pray for Mick. Any other concerns this morning? All right, so we will pray for all of them. Um, An announcement, if you joined us for the lunch at Warfields, your coupon is running out. So join us Thursday at noon and we will enjoy another lunch together. All are invited, even if you don't have a coupon. Um, there are tickets here for the third annual Ontario County Comfort Food Cook-Off. They are $10 a piece and this is March 7th from 3 to 5. I believe our very own Ellen is a judge for this, so um, you can come and see her and enjoy some good food. And I believe Linda will have these, um, or you can see me until I give them back to her. Uh, if you're looking for any information about the church, you can always visit our Facebook page, our website. There's also a very large insert in here about all the events that are upcoming. Um, so please stay in touch with us that way. And are there any other things that need to be brought up today? If not, we will start with our center in music.
join me in our call to worship. Our Father, you are in heaven, high and lifted up, higher than our highest thoughts. Holy is your name. Besides you, there is no other. You are, you are God and you alone. Receive us into your kingdom, the kingdom of your anointed Son, Jesus, whose name we bear. Receive us, for we come to you in his name. We pray in him and with him. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand if you're able to sing, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight, number 399. confession. Merciful God, for the things we have done that we regret, for the things we have failed to do that we regret, for all the times we have acted without love, for all the times we have reacted without thought, for all the times we have withdrawn care, for all the times we have failed to forgive, forgive us. For hurtful words said and helpful words unsaid, for unfinished tasks and unfulfilled hopes, God of all time, forgive us and help us to lay down our burden of regret. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. While it is true that we have sinned, it is a greater truth that we are forgiven through God's love in Jesus Christ. To all who humbly seek the mercy of God in Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, number 383.
seated. And let's have the kids come up. They want to come up today, because look what I have. Ha ha. Brides. <laughs> come on, Coda. There you go, buddy. Oh, we made a breakthrough. Um, hold your breath and hang on for the ride, because here it comes. Okay, I have something to give you. And before I give it to you, I want to ask you, do you deserve for me to give you anything? <laughs> you know this is a trick question, right? Cody, you want one? What does that mean? What, what is a, trick <laughs> a trick question has an answer that you're not anticipating. Hello. I know you like these. <laughs> this is a hard decision. There's lots of different colors and okay, awesome. Now. What did you do to earn that lollipop I just gave you? That's the trick question. You said you, you deserved it. So what did you do to earn it? Uh, <laughs> fell into my trap, didn't you? You, you know I I Come to church? Well, you wouldn't have gotten it if you hadn't come to church, right? But you really did nothing for me particularly. I listened to the song. <laughs> he listened to the song, so he deserves to be compensated for that. I don't know what that says for our singing. Anyway. <laughs> God wants you to go back that way. Okay. No, you, in all honesty, right, you did nothing for me today that I asked you to do that you deserve to have a lollipop for, correct? Yeah. Correct. Yes. And yet I gave you a lollipop, and I don't want it back, especially after you... You can go ahead and eat it if you want. Um, especially after you put it in your mouth, I don't want it back. It's a free gift from me to you. Now, God also gives you a free gift. And he doesn't ask for that free gift back necessarily. But we do give him a free gift back because we love him so much. Um, so what is the free gift that God gives to everybody here in this place but, and to you? Earl? Um, we give him praise. No, what does he give you? Love. Free gift. He doesn't des he, you don't have to do anything. Love. Yes. We have to do nothing to get his love, right? Except be ourselves and live into our potential. Um, we do nothing. We give him love back because he first loves us. But we don't have to do anything before he loves us. He loves us unconditionally. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So um, if God were here and were to give you a lollipop, you wouldn't have to give him the lollipop back either. He would want you to have it because he loves you and he wants good things for you. Are we have out I'm going to go on with this in my, in my sermon. We have outbreak today or we don't have outbreak? We do have outbreak today. Oh, Barb's doing it. Okay. So Barb might be talking about this more with you or maybe not. But anyway, um, I want you to always remember these things. You are a child of God. Can you say that with me? I am a child of God, and God loves me no matter what. Can you say that with me? God loves me no matter what. If you forget anything else from today, I want you to remember, you are a child of God, and God loves you no matter what. You can go to Outbreak and have fun while I talk to your, your parents and um, friends out here. Oh, one, two, three, quick, go find somebody that needs a hug today. Go find someone needs a hug, quick.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, be with us now as we hear your word. Open our hearts and minds to hear what you have to say to us today. And if it is as simple as you love us, how powerful a message is that for us today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm continuing on with my series in Romans, which is always clear as mud by the time I get done reading it, but I hope to unpack this for you a little bit further. So, Romans chapter 3, beginning with verse 21. Listen for the word of God to you this day. But now a a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice, because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law. On on that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by his faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. Clear as mud? You should have seen me studying this this week. Clear as mud. It's all right. I'm going to unpack that for you. I hope so that by the time you leave here, you might have a little bit of a concept about what I just read. Because right now, I'm sure you're sitting there going... We've been talking about in the beginning part of this passage how the Jewish Jewish Christians, this is this book is aimed at Christians, whether they are Jewish Christians or Gentile Christians. Um, how the Jewish Christians have been saying, hey, we had to be circumcised, uh, we males, so the male Gentiles need to be circumcised. And not only that, but the, the Gentile Christians need to follow all the rules and regulations that we followed from the Old Testament because if we had to do it they have to do it too and the Gentile Christians are going really we came from a faith of believing in idols pagan gods and we have been introduced to the one true God and our hearts have been changed and we have to do things in order to earn our way to earn our, our love of God or God's love for us to earn our salvation And Paul is taking this dance of all of you are equal in God's sight because no matter whether you are Jewish Christians or Gentile Christians, all of you sin and fall short of the standard that God has set for you. Therefore, there's no difference. There should be no boasting that you're Jewish. There should be no boasting that you're Gentile. There is no boasting. The only thing you can boast in is the love of God for you. Alright, I'm going to poke the bear again as I often do and you all go, oh my gosh, she's poking the bear again. Americans believe, tell me if I'm wrong, but Americans, I grew up anyway, believing that if I worked hard and saved my money, I could do and become anything that I wanted to do or become. There is no free gift in life. It all has to do with me working hard and how I take care of my finances or what God has given me. Yes? Yes. 
And that is why Americans have a hard time understanding that the, the salvation that God offers through Jesus Christ is absolutely free and there is nothing you can do, do to earn that love, that salvation. Except one thing, and it's too simple, and you all will leave here. I've, I've heard some of you say to me, I want to be good, I want to be gooder. No, you don't have to be good, you don't have to be gooder. Only God is good. You need to be you. Because all you have to do to have salvation is to believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Americans have a hard concept with that because we are used to earning our way and our society looks down on those who are not able to or choose not to earn their way. Yes? Okay. So you're with me. My brother called me last night as I was finishing up my thoughts about this sermon today. He never calls me. You know that I have a kind of iffy relationship with him. It's getting better. For those of you that have relationships and families that are not perfect, it's getting better. He called me last night and said, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm fine. How are you doing? Oh, no, what's going on over there? Nothing, nothing special. I'm like, oh, there's something. You don't just call me for nothing special, right? He called to tell me that he was in the hospital this week, and I'm sharing this partly because I'm coveting your prayers for him. Um, my family on both sides has heart issues. He is also the same shape I am in, which is round. Um, his doctor has told him that he has to lose a massive amount of weight. Um, they have not found any reason why he had arrhythm arrhythmia this week. Um, and nitro seemed to take care of it. But I'm concerned about him because he is always the strong macho man. You know the type? Where nothing's going to get me down. I can take care of myself. This is okay. And I don't need to worry about anything. And he's very flip about saying when it's my time to go be with God, it's my time to go be with God. But last night, I didn't hear that. I heard a little fear. So I covet your prayers for him. What I want to share, to you, uh, share with you about that conversation, though, has something to do with something totally different than his health. It has to do with his mission work. He actually goes, has gone to Haiti a number of times and worked down there to get clean water. He goes to Maui in Africa. Do you know where Maui is? Do you know that that's the place where Al-Qaeda in the northern part are all over there. That's where there's war. That's where it's not safe. And every time he tells me he's going to Maui, I go, oh God, really. Um, be with him. Because I fear for him physically. Even though I know God is watching over him and whatever happens, God is with him. He almost at one time was picked up by Al-Qaeda. He had to be sequestered for a number of days until the Al-Qaeda gave up looking for him. But it came close. He goes over there because he does the clean water wells. And he has a mission for, missionary friend. Um, and he has told this missionary friend after that Al-Qaeda um, event that he won't go in the dangerous parts of Maui anymore. He will go to the southern parts of Maui. So last night he was saying, well, my missionary friend is coming in April and he says he's ready for me to come back over. And, and I'm going, well, that's, that's great, Bill. Um, you got to get your health taken care of first, but that's, you know, that's great. Go back over there. I said, and where are you going in Maui? This is the sister's way of saying, are you going in the part where Al-Qaeda are going to come pick you up? Or are you going in the part that's safe, in the southern part? And he told me this. He is going over there to help the Christians in Maui build a camp for youth so that the youth can go to someplace safe, learn about God, and hopefully be taken out of the stream of human trafficking because that is an area of the world where people go in and grab especially young girls up for human trafficking of various kinds and it is not safe for the young people. He said, hey, that's wonderful. He says, you know, Ellen, I'm going to go there to help them not to do the work myself, because when I leave, then nobody else is going to know how to do what I've been doing. They won't be able to fix the well if there's an issue. But I am going over there to help them 
build a huge building, do a well, do whatever it takes to get this camp up and running. He said, Bill, that is awesome. He just loves it. He's grown closer to the Lord since he's been going to these places, third world country places, than he had before. He said, that's awesome. Would Ellen go there? Not on your life. <laughs> but Bill does. Then he proceeded to tell me how they have purchased this property from an imam, 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 tells you my ignorance anyway um, the, the head of the Muslim imam. Imam. imam there we go I knew it wasn't right imam um, and here's the way it operates there never in the United States would this operate this way here's how it operates they have paid cash for this property it will take three years for them to be able to get the deed to the property in those three years, if they don't do anything to improve or make motion toward building this camp, the imam can take that property back and they lose all their money. They don't get their money. How un-American is this, right? They lose their money. So even before they paid for the property, they've been on that property, the natives, clearing that property, getting it ready to lay the foundation, which is what they want Bill to bring a group over to do for this building, for this camp. He said, well, how, how did they manage to come up with money and stuff from over there? Because I know it's not a region where there's a lot of blessings like material blessings like we have here and he said you know what they trust God completely to provide what they need to do what he has called them to do unlike Americans he went on to say he said yeah I get it he said Americans never really have to rely on God because we work hard we save our money and we can do it because we're Americans but third world country people are dependent upon God always, every single day, for food, for housing, for whatever they need. And they lean heavily on God to provide. And they never, ever say God will not provide because they know God will provide. You're back. We finished our lesson. Ah, okay. Um, and yet we struggle in America to say God we believe you provided us with salvation and we don't have to work to earn our way into heaven but people in third world countries will openly loudly even to the Muslims say our God has provided for us and this is how God has provided are you with me? You probably see it around here. I mean, I know I do it. I see young people who go to work for one day at the outlet mall over there, and after one day they go, I don't want to do that anymore because that's work. They expect me to do things I don't want to do. I'm not going to do that. And they quit without telling the boss. They just don't show up anymore. I don't know about you, but that isn't how I was raised. That's not my work ethic. But the same kind of theory comes into churches that play in churches with faith. And I hear it in different ways. I hear it um, many years ago when I was living in a mobile home park from somebody who brought me a bouquet of irises and left them between my door. No, no. No, nothing. I said to somebody, hey, I just got a whole bouquet of irises. They're really pretty. I, I don't know where they came from. Nobody told me. I don't know why I've got them. And I was told who the person was that left them. And here is what this person said about the person that left them. He's trying to get into heaven through the back door. <laughs> You understand that? He's trying to work his way to heaven through the back door. He doesn't come to church. He doesn't worship. He believes, sort of, kind of, but he's doing good things in order to earn his way to heaven is what that means. And I said, how sad. Because he doesn't need to do that. All he needs to do is believe. And I have sat by the bed of people who are dying, who um, are seek, have been seekers all their life, looking for God and haven't found God. 
or didn't think they found God. And they have said to me, I'm going to hell, Ellen. I'm going to hell. I know, God, I'm not going to go to heaven because I didn't do enough for God. I didn't go to church. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And I said, okay, but do you believe in, in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And they have said to me, well, yeah. And I've said, then why are you questioning your salvation? Because that's too simple is the answer I get back. It's too easy. It's not enough. Uh, surely I have to do more than that. Bless you. Paul says, we are all equal. There are no stag staggering, uh, this person's higher than this person, um, is, and this person's lower, in the whole scheme of God's love. That means that no matter who we are, God loves us. So, Renee, God loves you, just as you are. You don't have to change. And God loves you, just as you are. You don't have to change. Daryl? I got it, okay. Working on names. <laughs> And Jane, I won't pick on Marcia. God loves you just as you are. You don't have to do anything to earn that love. And Jed and Amy, God loves you just as you are. You don't have to do anything to earn that love. Are you getting my point? You do not have to do anything to earn God's love for you. God loves you, period. From the beginning of time, God has loved people. The... The Old Testament is full of rules and regulations that people made a burden. And that's what the Jewish Christians were trying to do to the Gentile Christians. Make them carrying the burden that they carried. We don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. Isn't that good news, guys? Good news? You don't look like it's good news. You're looking like... It's good news. However, when you receive love from somebody, do you not want to do something back? Love them back? Appreciate their love for you? Let them know you care? And so that is why we come to worship to praise God. God is the audience watching us. It's not Ellen giving you um, entertainment this morning. A little bit of both. No, I, I think he's the audience, and we are we are we are here to give our praise to God, even Ellen. And he wants to know that our hearts have been changed. If anything's going to change, it needs to change here. Just as those Christians in Maui's hearts were changed from worshiping idols to worshiping God through heart. And we need to, to give whatever we give and do whatever we do in appreciation for the love that God has for you and me. So when I'm here working for you, working, you hear me say that? Working for you? I'm not working. And I'm not doing it necessarily for you. I am doing it for you because I love you all. But I'm doing it because I've been gifted by God to do certain tasks. And those tasks include being a pastor and a preacher that I never thought I would ever be doing. And I do it to the best of my ability out of my love for God. Not because I have to do anything in any particular way, but I want to give my best back to God. And when God calls me to do something, even if I don't have the money to prepare myself to do that or don't think I have the gifts and talents to do that, you know what? In my lifetime, that money has come and the gifts and talents have been given and I have been able to move on trembling in my feet thinking, God, you picked the wrong person. So I want to boldly say today, praise God you're here. I love you, but more importantly, God loves each and every one of you present here today. And may you leave this place, if you think of nothing else, may you leave this place knowing you are a beloved child of God. And you don't have to earn that love any more than these kids sitting up here had to earn, earn having that lollipop. So think about it this week. You are a child of God. You, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have salvation. Don't worry about that. Worry about other things. People that are sick, people that need things, other items. Think about it. Amen.
And our crew's off to help with the barbecue. Got it. Okay, here's the update on the barbecue before we go into prayer time. Isn't this quite something? Okay, God. One pork ticket left and seven chickens are left. So if you want those, that's, what's, that's the update. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. And there is nothing that we can do for you that equals in comparison to what you have done for us. So we give you our belief, our thanks, and our um, attitude of gratitude. Today we ask that you be with all those who need you in a special way. And in particular, we ask that you be with Dave, who's in the, who's in the hospital with an infection. Be with Bert. Be with um, Penny. Grant, Peg, and Carl save travel mercies on their way home. Be with Sharon, who's dealing with cancer. Continue to be with our villa and Dave. Place your healing hand upon Penny and others who are dealing with illness. Be with Mick. Be with my brother Bill and with Oma. And be with all those who have health issues today. We give you thanks and praise for birthdays, and so today we give you thanks for um, Alice and Missy's birthdays this week and ask that you bless them and continue to use their gifts and talents that you have given them. For all of these things, we trust you to watch over us and others in our world who need you in a special way. Hear us now as we lift our voices together in the prayer which your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now offer our gifts of tithes and off offerings to God in appreciation for all that he has done for us and in love. So give of your tithes and offerings joyfully.
bless our gifts. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to give to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you, not with our lips only, but with our whole lives, turning the duties, the sorrows, and the joys of all our days into a living sacrifice to you, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in our final song. Jesus, I promise. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.